So today I'm going to do a quick video about load securement when you're loading up all these riding mowers and different types of lawn equipment. So this trailer here I recently got last Thanksgiving. And it's 18 foot flatbed car trailer with a 2 foot dovetail on the back. Rated for 7,000 pounds so this one I'm not going to be able to really overload. because I, I can't fit enough riding mowers on to to overcome that weight limit. So, when you're loading these, there's all different shapes and sizes. You know, you have to look at each individual thing and and figure out how you're going to secure it. You know, right now I got some push mowers on the back here, which normally I wouldn't, but I had a little bit of space. I didn't have enough tractors to put on, and they wanted some push mowers, so Here's just a quick walk around of how this ended up being about actually securing them. So this nice pretty Harbor Freight strap in the front here is just holding these two tractors forward. And I've got a nice heavy duty one pulling them backwards. So the one in the front is really just keeping the one in the back from coming loose. And I... I added these D-rings. I put four of them on each side because the trailer just didn't have anything like that. It has these guys here, and I know you can get drop-in D-rings, but I couldn't find any for that size because those are like six-inch channel, and all the ones I was finding was for four-inch channel. So this strap right here is just holding this tractor forward to keep this strap tight and then I got these two straps holding these push mowers down and forward and I've got this strap holding all these guys down and and to, towards the center so here's the other side of this craftsman strap now this here, anytime you can, you really want to wrap your hook around like that. That way if it comes loose a little bit, you know, from bouncing around before you get to come check them again. If that strap comes loose a little bit, your hook's not going to just, just drop down off of here. Like if you just had this hook just hooked up there, you know, if that strap comes loose, it could actually become detached and not do anything. So that's why sometimes my, my hooks are like that. Now this hook, I didn't do that because that hook is too long. If I was to loop that around, like I just said back there, it wouldn't even latch. You know, it wouldn't stay on there. Tightening down the strap would actually push the hook up and it would release. So, you know, here's the other side of this one that's holding these two back. And as far as these tails, I tie them up any way I can. I know there's fancy ways of rolling them up. And then tucking them into there but that's not always practical you know it depends on where the latch is on that buckle if it's going to keep keep that tight when you fold it up and put it in there sometimes it's too much sometimes there's not even enough to do that but i know i've seen videos where guys you know fold that up real nice tuck it in the handle and push it down it just doesn't always come out that way so as far as these machines I got a bungee there holding that hood on just so it doesn't want to flop around because I'm going to be going down the highway at highway speed. Now this Craftsman one, that hood's a lot heavier, so I'm not really worried about that one. And a bagger like this. Now this bagger here, it latches pretty good with these, but you start bouncing around, there's no telling what's going to happen. So I always like putting a strap over top of the hood because I didn't really have space to take this whole bagger off and put it in my truck so this one here I just have it going right to there and the bottom of this bracket actually has a pin that goes down in the bottom of the tractor and there's a cotter pin on the bottom of that pin so that bagger is not going to come off you know some of them just rest in there so you want to make sure that it's not going to bounce around and come out. So sometimes I tie down the whole bagger. Sometimes I'm just worried about the hood. 
and then this part here is latched on pretty good so that's not going to go anywhere you know and then this strap here goes over to the cub cadet and uh you know it's holding down that one there and now one thing you always want to do is a, a good walk around just to make sure everything's secured you know like here i got this hood tied down on this john deere because it's not actually attached to the hinges but it fits on there real well so having that bungee on there is going to keep that nice and secure now back to doing a good walk around one more time before you pull out i just noticed that i don't have a strap on this mower right here on this errands now it's not going to roll off of there the way it's sitting because it's captured there and there but that's nowhere near good enough you know if something happens you hit a bump or you know even if you crash you know heaven forbid if anything comes off your trailer and does damage to something else you're liable for that even if you didn't cause the accident most likely and i'm not a lawyer or a traffic judge but i would imagine that you know if any of these machines cause damage in the course of you having an accident you're you're liable for that so i'm going to put a strap over top of that and then that's going to be good so you always want to make sure you have plenty of straps. I got a lot of straps on this load. I'm making this video here. This is the first time I'm doing a load like this since I started really recording to put on YouTube. I have some loads that I took pictures of and videos of on, on Facebook. But now I'm really starting to try to promote this YouTube channel. So I figured I'd you know, make this load securement video and uh you know don't be afraid to put more straps on like i said these, this yellow strap in the front is just holding these front really keeping this one tight and this is a nice heavy duty strap i don't know what the load rating is but this is not a harbor freight strap like this one is some of these other ones are harbor freight straps but with this trailer not having a bulkhead on the front i like to have a good strap holding these two tractors back because if something would happen, I wouldn't be able to stop. If, you know, if I hit something and I come to a sudden stop, I want something that's going to hold everything back. You know, you can control how fast you pull out as far as holding everything forward. You know, you don't need a whole lot holding everything forward, but the straps need to stay tight. So I like to strap the rear tractors. If I have two on the back, I like to have a strap holding them front. And a really good strap holding them back and that way they just they don't move so if you don't have one holding them front the, the strap holding them back is going to come loose because they're just going to slide off the back of the trailer so like i said i got this trailer last thanksgiving it's 18 foot seven foot wide i moved the fenders out a little bit because they were they were in further than they needed to and they, they still barely cover the tires you know, the, the sidewalls of the tires were sticking out where they had to the fender at. So I, I moved it out, moved them both out about an inch, an inch and an eight. So I got two and a quarter inches more clearance between my fenders on that. So it's a true 84 inch wide deck. Now this is the trailer that I've been using. This is a, a six and a half by 16. And you can see it's only got a single axle. Well... I've put six tractors on this many times, you know, different ones. To put six on this one, they have to have some of the decks have to be off or they have to be really small. I did cut out some openings for the decks to stick out, you know, in the back there and then in the front here. That way, you know, I get a little bit more space. And over time, that proved to be not a good idea because that top rail is part of the the strength of this trailer because it's just an angle iron trailer so you know i've put this trailer to the test and i'm going to put some pictures in here of uh, other loads that i've had on here before and uh i'll admit i was really close to the weight limit more than once but usually i was not going to be on the highway on them with those loads now this load here is that i have on this one i'm going on an interstate you know highway speed keeping up with traffic and i just decided i needed a heavier heavier duty trailer for this and to haul you know a couple more atvs on when we go out and play 
So, you know, I, I graduated up to this one, bought it new. You know, and this is what I was using. I still use it. it it's, it's nice for putting two or three on when I'm going to pick them up without having to take this thing. And, you know, one drawback to this one is there's no sides on it, which I can build sides and put them on eventually. But, you know, when you have something like this, like this John Deere, and this is only a 46 inch deck you know the tires are on the deck the fender the uh the deck is not sticking out past the fenders so i'm good there so it's nice having the open sides for something like this so i'm gonna throw another strap on this little mower here and then we roll i'm not gonna film any of that maybe i'll take a couple quick pictures when i get to where i'm going but, you know, just a quick video about load securement, you know, and here you can see, you know, I put the buckles like that. So if they do come loose a little bit, they won't fall off. And, yeah, you know, I'm stopping for to refuel me with coffee about six miles down the road from here at a local sheets. And, of course, then I'm going to check the straps again. I'm going to be going over railroad tracks before I get there. So this stuff's all going to settle. Now, you know, maybe you're wondering why are these on the trailer? Why are they all going all at one time like this? Well, these are ones that I'm not going to fix. You know, like obviously this little guy here is just parts. You know, this one here is fixable, but I'm not putting my time into it. And, you know, there's somebody out there that wants them more than me. You know, this Craftsman would be a, a nice piece to fix, but... You know, it needs an engine and you know these days where am i going to find an engine at i don't have an unlimited supply nowadays the tractors are nice but they need engines well where do you find an engine in a tractor that's not already fixable so i'm gonna one more strap on here and i'm gonna head out and uh i'm gonna add some more stuff to this video once i do the editing so you'll see some other stuff that i had loaded on that trailer and some different loads I had on this one. And, you know, like I say in the one video, I'm glad this is an 18 foot. I would have liked a 20. But on the, the one load I did, I needed every inch of the 18 feet for what I had on it. So, uh, you know, I'm not sure where that stuff's going to end up at in the video. But it's going to be in here somewhere just so you can see what what I have to do sometimes. This is, you know, you get them in. Well, you, you don't make any money till they go out. So, uh, you know, like and subscribe. And well, since we're talking about load securement, I figured I'd lay out the straps that I use. So they, they go from the weakest over here to the strongest over here for the ones that I have. And uh, looks can be a little bit deceiving. So this one here, this is just a one inch ratchet strap. And the capacity on this may not be be in focus but this one's 400 pounds and it's got a, a fairly thin hook now I see people have these pretty common I wouldn't use this to hold down a riding mower if you use two of them you'd be okay uh, I like to make sure that the straps going to be plenty strong enough but that's rated for a 400 pound working load now this one this one's nice and wide and yes this is a Harbor Freight special the capacity on this is 833 right over here. Not sure if it's focused or not. But this one's 833 pounds, even though it's a two inch wide strap. The hooks look like they're beefy, but if you don't have that coating on, they're gonna be smaller. Now here's one without a coating, where the coating's wore off. And the one with the coating is the, just as thick as the one without the coating. So you know the metal underneath here is thinner. So you really need to look at what the rating is. Every strap, when it's new, has a tag like this. They, they don't last forever. The, you know, the tags wear off. Sometimes you can't read them. That strap is basically new. Now this strap here, the webbing is not as wide. But this is a thousand pound capacity on this strap. I wish it would focus, but for some reason it's not. Now this is another Harbor Freight strap. You know, this hook is doubled. 
and it's got a nice binder here you know it's not just a little chintzy binder like that you know it's a it's a decent binder but it's a thousand pound strap so it's more than twice what that one is and it's more than this one here now this one here is another one i just got a couple pairs of these this one's also a thousand pound capacity right up there and the, right under the blue it's a thousand pound capacity now this one's a really nice one this has these little clips on it so that if it's on here like that and it comes loose it's not going to come off so that part's nice but the real reason that that's on there is this is like for motorcycles atvs where you would hook this through here see if i can do this one-handed you would slide that on like that and now you have a loop to go around your handlebars like that and it's still rated at a thousand pounds working load on that strap with that loop like that and that's that's a thin strap that, that's thinner than this one it, it's really the same it, it's i think it may be inch and a quarter or an inch and an eighth maybe but it's almost the size of this one but it's more than double this capacity because it's a thicker webbing you know it's a little wider and it's thicker but on this label here you know it, it, it's a thousand pound capacity like i showed earlier and so that, that's a pretty nice strap there and it's got you know regular full-size buckles as far as the handle but it's only wide enough for that strap now these two straps here these are older ones these don't have labels on them anymore but that's basically a two inch wide strap it's just a hair a hair thinner than this one you know that the yellow one's a little bit wider but the, these are old ones i bought these at carlisle like spring carlisle we have here where i'm at and uh, these were from a vendor, you know, it's like a car show kind of thing. And I bought these at a vendor over a few year period. Every couple of years, I would go get more. These don't have labels on them anymore. But these are probably 2,000 pound or at least 1,500 pound straps. These are pretty significant straps. They're, that's thick webbing there. And now we come to this one, which this is a 27 foot strap. So it... it you know, you can cover pretty much. You know, if you've got a, a tall load, say you got a, a skid of pellets, you know, you can throw this over top. And it's, it's a 3,300-pound working load on this strap here. And you got some nice beefy hooks here. And it's a 2-inch wide strap. Now, this is from Tractor Supply, my local Tractor Supply. I bought some of these. So I have ones with this kind of hook, and I have ones with with these kinds of hooks or actually i'm sorry you know this kind of hook and then a, a flat hook that's made to go right on here kind of like that you know it, it, the, the hook is flat it's not it's not bent rod like this here but these straps a couple of these you could you could hold down a car but i would if i was securing a car with these i would use one of these corner i would use four of them at least so these are the straps that I have. These little one inch ones, I'd use that to tie down a hood or a bagger onto the, the, the mower that I have loaded or maybe a couple push mowers, I'd throw them over. You know, I, I don't use them on riding mowers because I like using something like this, especially these here. I've always usually had these, but then I recently got these smaller ones just because I needed more straps for this big car trailer I got, you know, that you saw earlier. So there's kind of a, an inventory of the straps that I use. 